got this email the other day from Brian. We don't mention last names here because we don't stitch people out. Glendon, I've been watching your videos and got pimping Craigslist and porn in the DVD player ebooks. All I can say is thank you. I took your advice to set up a storage unit for shipping and storage. My wife and I also set up a space in the antiques market. And after expenses, the past two months, we've made a profit of $500 each month. I know you don't consider this big money, but for us, it's a great start. <coughs> Give yourself a pat on the back. First of all, $500 a month, you just started. That's all profit. It's great. Let's be real. For many people, $500 a month is the difference between eating and not eating. It's a chunk of money, so you should be really proud and you're amping up the correct way. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What I find interesting is that people doing storage auctions aren't profiting. We're unable to do storage auctions, but instead get our merchandise from sit down and bid on item auctions as well as yard sales. Even though you teach about storage auctions, I have used that information in business sense to have start making a profitable business. Thank you. All right, Brian, thanks for getting the books. And thanks for the success story in just two to three months. Let me break it down for you. Let me really, really just break it down for you. The reason that so many people are not successful in the storage auction business, dun, 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 the law and order sound, is their expectations. They're drunk on the Kool-Aid of storage wars, auction hunters, and I'm going to say it. Many people think I'm full of shit and they're not going to buy the book because they think they're smarter than the kid with the tan. So what if I did it for eight years? So what if I'm the realest dude on the internet about this business? It doesn't matter. They think they know better. I know this because I used to have the same mindset before I would buy and listen to CDs, cassettes. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty smart. I can figure this out. And the truth of the matter is, as long as I maintain that mindset, my wallet stayed kind of thin. Because of the truth of the matter, I wasn't that smart. And there are many of you out there who think you are, and you're failing fast. That's the deal. That is the deal because... Just like Brian, who just got in the business, who's watched the YouTube videos, several kids who have watched the videos and used the information in the videos to make money, and it hit me. It just really, really hit me. One of the problems that we have in this country is disposable people. I got this concept from David Simon, the creator of The Wire. He was giving this interview, and it's actually on YouTube. Uh, great, great interview, and was just talking about What's going on in the United States? We have a huge segment of the population that is just disposable. And when I say disposable, I'm not going to get into what do you mean in terms of how you are in the eyes of God and your net worth as a human being. I'm talking about disposable is terms of if tomorrow you died and no one noticed. Let me say that again. If you die tomorrow and no one noticed, your presence here on this earth was just a blip. You were just sucking up oxygen. And there are many people, especially Americans, especially as I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to participate. I just want to live my life the way I want to live my life with no fuss and no muss. And to you, my friends, with that mindset, Freedom has a heavy, heavy price. And you're not paying the price. And sooner or later, your freedom's going to be impeded. Whether it's you're going to need help from social safety nets. or you That stuff is going, going, going away. Many people don't believe in evolution. They think, hey, you know, it didn't happen. Well, I believe in evolution. And I believe in Darwinism. And what Darwin said is about to happen. The strong are going to survive, and the weak and the meek are going to get ate the fuck up. It's going to happen. But see, the thing is, when that is said, people think it's happening on this mythical, physical level. It's happening, but it's mental and digital. If you don't, you know, uh, Tony Brown, years ago, he said, if you don't have an internet connection right now, you're already behind. He said that almost a decade ago, and there are many people who are like, I'm not going to do the internet, I'm not going to get here, I'm not going to become involved, blah, 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 blah. And some people are so far behind, they will never, ever catch up. And they don't even know it. And they're just going to wake up one day and like, what the hell happened? What happened was you didn't make a decision. You 
purposely became a disposable person. I'm going to say something right here that's probably going to rankle the fuck out of some black people. But I stopped at black, and I've never used the term African American. I didn't come from Africa. Didn't grow up in Africa. I grew up in freaking Adamsville, Alabama. I'm an American. When I went to Europe, they didn't go, hey, you know, he's an African. No, they said he's a Yank. That's what they used back in the day. It's like, oh, you're a Yank. When I went to Paris, I'm American. When I went to Italy, I'm American. When I went to Japan, I'm American. I was not an African American any other where, any other place on the planet other than here. Show you how fucking stupid it is. I stopped at black. I'm not moving forward. I think it denigrates and it creates a problem. And where I'm going with this is many blank Americans don't assimilate into the system. This is the thing that has just driven me to distraction for years. Let me give you a few numbers. The United States population is roughly 308, 310 million, maybe 20 million Mexicans hanging out or more. Okay, white people compro comprise 220, 200, yeah, about 220 million white women, maybe 112, 115. <laughs> Black Americans, 40 million. So, it's a strange, strange relationship when you're the minority trying to hold on to certain things. And I understand, I live in a neighborhood with a bunch of Jewish people who firmly and in desperately hold on to their culture. They're Hasidic Jews around here. I see them walking. They're doing their things. Talk to them. Hey, how you doing, Yabi? Whatever. But they also assimilated and became critical parts of society. You can do both. You can maintain your culture, but you need to assimilate. You have to assimilate because this is America. You have to be part of the process. You need to be part of the process to realize the dream. But there are many people who are like, I'm not jumping in that pool, but hey, I want all the benefits. I want all the glory from assimilation, but I refuse to do it because I don't want to. I think it's wrong. There was an article the other day on, on a site that just really ticked me off. This is guy, Dalton Cal Caldwell. He tried to collaborate with Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, and they pretty much said, hey, shut your project down, but we're, you're so brilliant, we'll hire you. He was like, I don't want that. I want to do my thing. To the point he took action, created his own Kickstarter-like program on his website, raised 800 grand, and is doing this thing. Will it work? Will it not? I don't know, but I'm going to join because I'm inspired by the fact that he didn't just sit back and go, it's Facebook. I've purpose, I, per, I think Facebook's going to go away of MySpace at some point. It's just a matter of time because what I don't like about social media is a large percent of it is bullshit. It's just happy, happy, go lucky feel. And you know, you can make money with it, but the reality is it's a huge time suck. But back to disposable people and how they relate to storage unit auctions. Watching TV. Drinking your beer, chomping on your pizza. You see Daryl get a nice unit, or Gerard and Brandy fight and get a nice unit. Now, forget the fact that there's probably some planting and staging going on. That's irrelevant. You see it, you like it, it looks good, it's exciting. It's like a great American treasure hunt. You can go out there and you can get some stuff and you can make money. Yeah, it's seductive. That's the Jedi mind trick. The reality is, storage auctions were hard a long, long time ago. Before there was a television show, before most people knew about it. And I remember the first few months literally kicked my ass. If you're not used to working hard, if you're one of those people that really never held a physically challenging job, you probably won't make it. And if you can't see pushing yourself to a higher level, you probably won't make it. Now, there was a guy on here years, a few months ago named Robert. He chronicled his storage auction journey. Started with $1,000. After a year, he only had 800 bucks. Essentially, he lost a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of fuel, and a lot of hope. Now, Robert referenced my channel, and this is one of the things he said. Check out Glendon's earlier videos. He did not once say, buy my book. Not once. Not once. What we have, and I take advantage of it too, we have a lot of people that come on YouTube and they give tutorials and they present knowledge. I've learned so much here. I also contribute 
to the community because there's 500 and some videos and I know from the letters and the success stories that I give out great information that will help you move forward in life. But see, the other thing is, there are people, as Dwayne Butler said with Castle and Addicts, check out his channel, who don't want to pay for their education. Do not want to risk any money, because I'm going to tell you, one of the reasons that Robert failed, and I'm not going to go, oh, he didn't buy my book, he didn't move fast enough. He didn't move fast enough. He, ex he did not have an internet presence. He didn't sell on Craigslist. See, the thing is, Many of the channels that I put out in my book in terms of selling were optional in my day. You could go buy units and sell at the flea market, have garage sales, or own a store and do fantastically well. It's 2012. It's not going to work like that. You need an Amazon account. You need an eBay account. I hate eBay. I think it's a necessary evil. But if you're going to be in the business, you need one. You also need an Etsy account. You also need to be fully functional with Craigslist, and you also need how to know how to market and advertise. That stuff is not optional. You have to do it to grow your business to a large level. But many people don't want to work that hard. Hence the disposable person notion. If you are a certain age and you look back at your life and you have not touched anybody, you've not left any legacy, you haven't built anything, you're a disposable person. There's a guy out there in the middle of the country who's never made more than 30, maybe 20 grand a year. He's built a farm. He's built a family. He's a member of his community. He's a deacon in his church. He's done a lot of wonderful things, and he's built a life because he's participated. This is not about money. This is about participation because call me overly patriotic, but I've been around the world, and this is the place to be. I don't care what you say. You can talk about America's got a problem. You can talk about the 99 percenters, which many of them, those people are disposable people. You know, if you're going to sit around and complain, if you go back to the example that I put with Caldwell Dalton, he had an incident where things didn't, weren't going the way he wanted. He took action in an appropriate way. Instead of saying, you know, Facebook's this and Facebook's that, he wrote an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg. Then he took action action not in years not in months within weeks that's how fed up he was with the social media expert and he's creating a paid social mil social social media utility a paid one and a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon because a lot of folks are sick of this stuff that's how you become a success not whining not bitching not being a disposable person let me give you another attribute of a disposable person Especially, it runs rapid with Americans. In this country, we were given many inalienable rights. Glorious rights, wonderful rights. I'm not going into the thing that, you know, people that look like me were in chains when the, you know, the Declaration of Independence was written. Facts are facts. But due to the brave, courageous, and heart-wrenching effort of many people that came before me, I get to share those rights now. And I don't take it lightly. Because, yes, the American history is steeped in ugliness, blood, and a lot of bad things. But it's history. Every country on the planet has similar history. Some places, it's worse. I could say Germany. And they were killing white people. But going forward, you have people here. They have these rights. And they think that the rights are more important than the action behind the rights. I started not one, not two, but nine businesses. Five of them failed. Because of the freedom of this place. Okay? The last four have been very successful. I had the option to do that. In many places in the world, you can't do that. There are many places that if you start a business and you fail, shh, it's it. That's it. It's over. It's a wrap. It's done. You, you don't get any more second chance. There are no second chances, no third, no fourth. And that's what makes America great. One of the tenets that Europe was trying to adopt that we have, and many people are going to think this is crazy, they wanted to get a bankruptcy system like ours because in other countries, once you go bankrupt, it's your life. Actually, it's becoming that way here because one of the things is you mess up, you pay a penalty in time, but you get a chance to start over. And you get another chance to start over. And you get another chance to start over. One of the reasons to be successful is failing and learning from those failures and moving that forward in success. But so many people are looking for the quick and easy way out. 
I put up a video how to increase your productivity not too long ago. Not too many people watched it. Not too many people. Anytime I put up a video that's about real business matters, eh, the viewership is going to be low. But that's okay because you know if someone gets the, the video, gets the information and, and improves their life or helps them out, it's a great deal. But you got to turn the boob tube off for two reasons. One, it wastes just a lot of time. Two, it's slowly conditioning your mind for mediocrity. Yes, that's the most, that's really, I'm telling you, since I really cut my TV watching time by 90% over the years, my mind has expanded. Because TV conditions you for mediocrity, and it's also part of social engineering. Like, I don't care how big the woman is, she can always kick the guy's ass no matter what size he is or his skill level. In real life, women are beat, robbed, raped frequently by men because they can't fight them off. But on TV, they can. More social engineering. But that's another video. But the whole deal is, you don't want to be a disposable person. You don't want to have a woe is me, a pitiful, disposable person mindset because even with the hardships that are coming, even with all the bad things that have happened and currently happening, this country is rich in opportunity. Let me say it again. It is rich in opportunity for those who open their eyes and see it. Because if you're doing this, I cannot be successful. I'm too old. I'm black. I'm a woman. I'm a kid. I'm blo If you're saying that stuff, do this. Just go out in the yard, take a shovel with you, dig a hole, lay in it, and just put the dirt over you and just go ahead and end it. Because... Until you open up your eyes, there are things that are before you that could have changed your life. You can't see it because, one, the mediocrity conditioning of television. Number two, you bought into a lot of uh, myths, like the myth of a college education. And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack about this, but the reality is recent graduates have been putting videos on YouTube left and right about we've been bamboozled. One guy did a video. He had been in college three years. He ran a little short on money. He took an A-plus certification course, got the book, and like a month-long course, and he, he essentially changed his financial picture from taking that course, getting that certification, and he was just like, essentially, I spent 400, 500 bucks, and I'm making money from that. I've been in college for three years. I've spent 30 grand, and I still don't have any skills to make any money. And he was just like, essentially, college is a scam. And I'm like, I'm not going to say all college is not a scam because you go to medical school, engineering school. You're going to get critical tools to be successful. But I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll take the heat because a lot of my friends who have degrees are like, that's not true. You know, it's a great experience. Check this. The average student now is like 25 to 27. They have a job, family, whatever. So they don't even get to do the traditional hang out in college, drink beer and stuff. Not doing that because they got to get through it and they got to make money as soon as possible. So that whole lay back and smell the roses, that's not the reality of many college students. Many college students are slaving day in and day out, going to work and studying all night to eventually earn something that may not make them any money. That's a daunting thing. But with disposable people, I mean, there's a sect of people that if aliens came down tomorrow and said, oh, those are disposable people and we're going to take them, not too many people would notice they were gone. Think about that. Do you want that to be the story of your life, that when you're gone, no one knew you lived. No one gave a damn because you were so damn selfish, cowardly that you refused to move forward in life and put yourself out there. Understand, when you do that, there's going to be bumps, bruises, maybe even a few broken bones. You're going to hurt yourself. But it is better to live and fail than to live a life of a coward. That's my opinion. And there's a lot of cowards out there who's like, oh, 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 bah, oh, bah, bah, bah. Bah! Sheep Nation. <laughs> well, hopefully you got some information out of this. And hopefully you're not a disposable person. Or if you are, you've wakened up, you've taken off the craziness, 
and you're going to make yourself relevant because there's so many things that you can do today to become a person that gives to society, a person that people look up to, a person that essentially is making the world better versus just sucking on the titty of dependency. Because there's too many people doing that. And I'm not talking about grandma that worked 40 years in the factory and on Medicare. I'm not talking about her. She put in her work and there was a contract made with her that we should honor. I'm talking about the lazy ass people who are between the ages of 18 and 40 that have never done shit with their life. Nothing. 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 Never done anything. Always trying to scam their way through life and never really built anything because they didn't stick with anything. I'm talking about that group and I have some on this channel and one of the reasons that I speak so harshly and I say, you know, fuck you and kiss my ass is they can't deal with the truth too long and they're going to just wither away and disappear because a lot of them are gone and I'm glad. I'm happy. You know, this is fucking Sparta. I would rather have 300 in the passageway than 3,000 with, you know, maybe 2,700 cowards. Give me the strong 300. That's what I would want. But that's the deal. Hopefully you got something and I will check you in the next video. You're always late. I can't take you anymore. You have no more sick time. Oh no, sick. Are you okay? Oh, you're stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid. You're That's what I be really speaking Cause even though this job pissed me off obviously oh, We're well, making nigga piss more is living poverty Obviously I gotta work, suck it up and give a smirk Smiling even though it hurt and see my boss a fucking jerk The corner the work. paycheck is really disrespect That shit's so low I can't afford to call collect And that's better than my jack with the white socks I'm steady slaving for days, just give me one shot Slaving all day, slaving all night We work slow days and we work slow nights Slaving all day My passion keeps on passing me, I'm getting older That's why I rarely let people at my job know I rap Cause that just turned into some circus like I'm an acrobat And my group workers are nosy and I don't miss it hard Can you do a rap at a job Christmas party? Hell no, you ain't shit offended you would ask me to Don't get it twisted that I'm working here cause I'm just passing through But they don't believe me cause I've been here for years working And so it's seeming it's dreaming and rapping ain't working On a professional level it's so objectionable shovel I'm doing dirt with so every day I work shit I'm steady slaving, behaving just like I'm Roots Tobin I feel dejected, rejected, sit on my stoop slowly And it's better than my Jack with the white socks I'm steady slaving for days, just give me one shot Slaving all day, slaving all night We work slow days and we work slow nights Slaving all day, slaving all night Slaving, 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 slaving